What's up, third graders? Thank you so much for joining me. My favorite part of all of third grade is learning to multiply and divide. And today I'm showing you two strategies to start multiplying larger numbers than you've ever worked with before. Well, at least in multiplication. Today our goal is to solve word problems by multiplying two digit by one digit factors. And this will help us when we're trying to tackle problems where we have bigger numbers of equal groups. For example, in this problem, Mrs. McNeely misses her students so much that she wants to mail cookies to each of their houses. She will send three cookies to each of her 17 students. How many cookies does she need to order? How many students do I have? 17. And I'm trying to send them each three cookies. Well, nowhere on my multiplication chart do I find the 17 times tables. Here I'm trying to solve 17 times 3. I have lots of strategies I could use to do that. I could count equal groups or add up 3 17 times make 17 hops on a number line, or draw an array of 17 rows of 3. But I know that multiplication is a fast way to add up equal groups. So isn't there a faster way? There sure is. The first way I want to show you is called multiplying with partial products, or I like to call it the box method because I use a box to make it simple and easy. I need you to get ready, because you're going to use the math knowledge you already have here. I've got 17 students. 17 is made of 10 and 7. So if I want to do 17 three times, then I could break up my 17 and multiply my 7's times 3 and my 10's times 3 and then add those two parts or partial products together to get the whole answer. My first step is to draw a box that has a 10's place and a 1's place. Then I'll break 17 into expanded form. I bet you can do that. Right, 10 plus 7. I'm multiplying those by 3, so I'll put 3 on the side. Let's start with 7 times 3. Use any of your strategies, or maybe you've been practicing your facts and know it like that. Take your time as you need it. The goal isn't to be fast, it's to figure it out. 7 times 3 equals 21. And 10 times 3 well, that's easy. 10, 20, 30. 10 times 3 equals 30. So, do I need to order 3,021 cookies for my students? No way! That's way too many. At the beginning, I broke 17 into 10 and 7 to get two different answers. At the end, I'll need to add those two answers together. 30 plus 21 gives me 51 cookies for my final product. How many cookies should I order? 51. Let's look at what we just did. Using the partial products method, first we break the larger factor into expanded form. Second, we multiply each part by the smaller factor. And third, we add the two products together. Let's try that with a problem about you. You're saving up for tickets to King's Dominion this summer. A kid's ticket to King's Dominion is $39, and you're hoping to go four times. So how much money do you need to save? Well, each of the four times you go, it will cost you 39 bucks. 4 times 39. 
Well, I could count all those tally marks, or I could use partial products. I'll start with my box, broken in half. 39 is made of 30 plus 9, and you can see that visually. I'm multiplying times 4. 9 times 4 here in the 1's place equals 36. And 30 times 4 might seem tricky at first, but let's use our picture. I see 3 10's, so I could count by 3's. 3, 6, 9, 12. 12 tens is 120. Or try it this way. I see 30, so I'll count by 30s. 30, 60, 90, 120. Every time, we'll see that zero stay in the ones place. 30 times 4 is 120. What's my last step again? You got it. I need to add my partial products. 120 plus 36 means that I need to save up $156 if we're going to King's Dominion four times. There's our final product. Nice job. Now, are you thinking, that's fine, Mrs. McNeely, but... My mom has shown me how to multiply big numbers, and it looked nothing like that. Well, I did promise you I would teach you two strategies, right? Let's look at another way to multiply using the standard algorithm, or what I call the old school method, because this is how I learned it when I was in school. Are you ready? Same question, I'm going to mail some cookies. I'm mailing them to my 17 students, and I want each one to get three cookies. This time, I will stack my numbers just like you do when you're stacking to add. I'll put my bigger factor on top and write 17 times 3. Notice how I lined up my 3 here in the 1's place. Now, just like when I add and subtract, I'll start in the ones place. 7 times 3 equals 21. But I can't write 21 in the ones place. So I'll put my 1 down, and I'll regroup my two tens into the tens place with a reminder to add them. I already multiplied them. I don't need to multiply those two again. Next step. I'll come into the tens place, and now I'll multiply 1 times 3. 1 times 3 equals 3, but don't forget about my extra tens. 3 tens plus 2 tens gives me 5 tens in the tens place. So now I can see that I need to order 51 cookies for my final product. That's right, two strategies, same answer. What did we just do? When we're multiplying with the standard algorithm, first we stack the factors with the larger one on top. Then we multiply in the ones place and we regroup if we need to. And last, we multiply in the tens place and add our extra tens. Let's try it with your example. This time, we're going to King's Dominion four times. Each time costs us $39, so we'll stack that with the larger factor on top, 39 times 4. Let's multiply in our ones place. 9 times 4 is 36, so what goes in the ones place? That's right, the 6. And where do the three tens go? Into the tens place, with a reminder to add. In the tens place, 3 times 4 equals 12 plus 3. And 12 plus 3 gives us 15 tens, so I'll even go into the 100s place. How much money do you need to save? $156. Now, how are you going to save that? 
And is King's Dominion even going to be open for us to visit this summer? Well, those are problems I can't help you solve. But I have just shown you two ways to multiply large numbers. And you can use that knowledge to solve word problems. Remember, you can always use repeated addition to check your multiplication work. The only way to become a genius at it is to practice, practice, practice. You already have all the math skills you need. So now, go get solving.